What's up guys, today we'll be checking out some of the best budget build gaming PC you can get this March 2024. And as a bonus, at the end of this video, I will share a PC building tip that will make you say, hmm, you don't say. By the way, for those of you guys who are watching us for the very first time today, my name is AJ and I am here to share with you PC building tips, tech and gaming product reviews, tech tips, and other tech gadgets for your productivity and gaming needs. Just a little bit of a disclaimer before we start, none of the items mentioned in this video are sponsored in any way, and what I will be sharing will be based on my own research to help you make an informed decision in your gaming PC build needs. Also, all affiliate links for all the products mentioned in this video will be in the description below. Now let me digress a bit. I actually received a comment on my first video from one of you guys saying that my audio is not that good. And I hear you, I hear you. So I actually bought a new microphone and I have been using it for the past few videos. And I would greatly appreciate it if you can leave down the comments below if the sound quality have improved. And if not, maybe I need to start to use a voice changer. Like this. Look, I am your father. And if you want to compare, I will leave the link of the first video up here for comparison. So with all of that out of the way, let's get started. Spring is here. Spring has officially started as of yesterday, March 19, 2024, and with the new buds blossoming all around us, the time for new builds is also upon us. If you're watching this video because you're thinking of building your own gaming PC or you're in the midst of research about building a new gaming PC, I hope this video will help even just a little bit in your decision making for your PC build. Plus, this is actually also a great time because with spring comes spring sale and any discount is welcome for getting all the parts that we want in a more affordable price. Do always remember that before you buy, always check out multiple resources like Newegg, Amazon, Micro Center, or even eBay to get the best bang for buck parts. So we will start with our most modest build, which is our $500 gaming PC build. This build would be recommended for those looking for an affordable gaming PC without breaking the bank. And that can do an okay job on 1080p gaming with medium settings on game titles. Do remember that we are trying to squeeze in whatever we can on this build so we are not prioritizing on aesthetics, but more on performance. So actually, this is a non-RGB build, but you can swap out some of the parts to add in a little bit more RGB as needed. So for the processor, the brain of our PC, we went with AMD Ryzen 5 5500, which is a 3.6 GHz 6-core processor. This processor currently retails at $90, but don't let the price fool you. This processor can handle the load of even the newly released games in the market right now. The Ryzen 5 5500 does not have any integrated graphics card so please take note of that and make sure you do not plug any display on the display ports on your motherboard because it will not work. All display outputs should be connected to your GPU card. As for the CPU cooler, the Ryzen 5500 already includes a stock cooler which we will use in this build plus since this cooler already has pre-applied thermal paste it is just one more thing that we can cross off our list. In any gaming PC needs, the combination of the CPU and GPU is very important because we would want to reduce the bottlenecking of the GPU and CPU as much as possible. Remember, there's no such thing as zero bottleneck. There will always be a bottleneck but we are here to make sure that we can minimize it as much as possible. And that is why we want to make sure that we want to have the best CPU and GPU combo that we can have. And remember, for gaming PC, we are leaning more toward GPU heavy rather than CPU heavy which is more on the productivity side. Coming to the GPU, we will be using a dual fan graphics card from ASRock, the ASRock Phantom Gaming which is an AMD Radeon RX 6500 XT with 4GB of VRAM. This graphics card comes in at $140. As for display ports, this graphics card has one HDMI 2.1 and one display port version 1.4a. The power consumption for this GPU is only on a mere 90 watts and a maximum of about 96 watts usage. So as you will see later on, 
uh, we will not be needing our very big power supply for this build. Next, we have the RAM. In this build, we will be using 16 GB of RAM and it will be a 2x8 GB of DDR4 3200 MHz RAM with the cast latency of 16 from Team Group. This RAM costs only $37 and also do remember that for latency, the lower the latency, the better. As for the motherboard, we went with the Gigabyte B550MK with the AMD socket, which is priced at $85. This is a micro ATX motherboard, but as you can see, there are a lot of connections that we can use at the back. And it also has dual M.2 connectors. So further down the road, if you want to expand your storage, you can do so as the need arise. It also has four DIMMs dual channel DDR4 RAM slots, which is much more than what we need in this build. Storage wise, we will be going with the one terabyte NVMe storage from Kingston. This is currently priced at $61 and actually this is a very reasonable price for this storage size. Now for the power supply. In order to keep the cost low, uh, we will be going with the non-modular kind of power supply. We have here the Thermaltik Smart 500 watts power supply which is rated at 80 plus and comes in with a 5-year warranty. Actually, this build only needs about 271 watts of power and our 500 watt power supply is more than enough to support all the components of our build as well as some ample possibilities for future enhancements as you need it. And finally, for the case that will hold all of our components, we are going with a case from Cooler Master. The Cooler Master Masterbox Q300L Micro ATX Mini Tower is only priced at $40. And this already includes one case fan which is already installed at the back for exhaust. And as you can see, it also has a modular I.O. panel, so you can actually adjust where you want to place your front I.O. ports. There's also pattern magnetic dust filters for the top and front panels of the chassis. And as an addition, this case can actually be positioned either horizontally or vertically. Depends on your choice. And finally, we just added a 3-pack case fan from Thermalrite to maximize the airflow for our case. These 3-pack case fans only cost us $12. With all of these components, we totaled at about $504.79. And boy, can I just say that once this build is done, this PC will perform just nicely. The full list of all the parts that we use in this $500 build will be down in the description below with all the links associated with each part. But just to get a good view of all the parts, let me just show you everything here. Next up, we have the $800 gaming PC build. This build will push the performance of your gaming PC to the best 1080p settings you can get, plus maybe even get a modest 1440p gaming at most in lower settings. This build totals at about $790 plus dollars so there's definitely room for adjustment on some of the parts here and there as necessary. Let's move on. Remember what I said about the CPU on our $500 build? So for the processor, the brain of our PC, we went with AMD Ryzen 5 5500. For this build, we will also be using the same AMD Ryzen 5 5500 with 3.6 GHz 6 core processor. Processor cost for this build is $90. Just as the same as the previous build, we can actually use the stock cooler for this, but I thought that we might spice things up a bit and I just bought a not so expensive uh, thermal right CPU cooler which is only priced at $19. The choice is still yours if you want to stick with the stock cooler and just use the extra cash for other components. The CPU cooler that we will be using in this build is called the thermal right Assassin X Refined SE ARGB CPU Cooler. One of the major upgrades that we are using in this build compared to the previous one is the GPU. Here we will be using an AMD Radeon RX 7600 XT which was just released this year, late January of 2024. The exact GPU that we will be using in this build is the XFX Speedster Kick 309 with a 16 GB of VRAM and cost around $350. And as you can see in this build, we went with a triple fan instead of the dual fan. Another upgrade that we did on this build is for the RAM. We are still using a 16 GB RAM but with a better clock speed of 3600 MHz with the same cast latency of 16. The RAM that we're going to use today is the G-Skill Trident Z RGB 16 GB RAM 
which is priced at $63. As for the motherboard, we went with the Gigabyte B550M Aorus Elite AX. This motherboard is a micro ATX motherboard, but as you can see, we have lots of options for connections and ports, and it also has dual M.2 connectors, so you can upgrade your storage in the future. The Gigabyte 550M Aorus Elite AX is currently priced at $110. For storage, we are still using the 1TB NVMe storage from Kingston, which is priced at $61. For the power supply, we upgraded from 500 watts to 600 watts. Still from Thermaltake, the Thermaltake Smart 600 watts power supply, which is priced at $45. This also is rated 80 plus and has a 5-year warranty from Thermaltake. For the case that we will be using in this build, we opted for the Montec Air 100 ARGB Micro ATX Mid Tower case. The Montec Air 100 is priced at $60, and what's great about this case is that it already has included four case fans, and all these case fans is also ARGB, which is pretty great and will light up our PC nicely. With all the case fans included in the Montec Air 100, we do not need to actually add more fans, but this one will depend on your needs. So with all of these components, we totaled at about $797.93. And as I said, there's actually a little bit more wiggle room in this build to change some of the parts as you need. The full list of this $800 build will be right down in the description below, as well as the affiliated links for each of the parts. And again, for you to get a good view of all the parts that we have used in this build, check this out. So there you have it, our BBB or our best budget build for gaming PC for this March 2024. And as I mentioned earlier, here is your bonus tip. For PC building, we always hear the word make room for future improvements. So sometimes we buy a bigger power supply or a bigger GPU or a bigger CPU so that later on we can change some of the parts and improve on it. But that thinking will make sense for today. But two to three years down the road, we don't know how the technology will evolve. So my tip for you today is to maximize whatever components that you can get now. If ever the time comes that you want to upgrade, make it more holistic and maybe you can sell off the old one and just build a new one with the new components that you want to. Because I'm telling you, when it's time for the upgrade, you would not only want to upgrade one of the components, you might upgrade most of the components inside. Think about it. Again, it's two to three years down the road. There will be new products coming out, new technologies coming out, and you would want to upgrade to that. Thank you guys for watching and if you want to see more of our BBB or our best budget build for gaming PC in the future, do subscribe to our channel. Bye guys and see you in the next one.